What's got you all hype, Sarah? It's only December 26th, the best day of the year. People wait all December for Christmas. I wait all December for the 26th and the 25th. Who am I kidding? This year's Barnes and Noble sale is a little different from their usual 50% off all hardcovers. Instead, it is only 30% off, but stay with me. For every $50 you spend, you get $20 in rewards. So I'm choosing to interpret that as for every $50, I'm actually only spending 30. And then down the line, I get to go back to Barnes and get free books. And that's book lover math for you. We've arrived at Barnes. We as in me and my mom, who is here to relish in all things Barnes and Noble sale as well. You know, being away at college, you don't get to go book shopping with your mom very much. So this is a nice little treat. On the Barnes and Noble, number two. <laughs> oh, hi, mom. <laughs> am embarrassed. We're not done. This is an abnormal amount of books for the average person to buy, but when would I ever want to be average, right? Look, I had not been to Barnes in over three months, so things just happened. And let me try to explain myself a bit. I wanted to buy some books that I've been waiting to buy until the sale. And then I also wanted to buy some new releases that I haven't really seen anyone talk about, so I can give you all my two cents on them because that's why I'm here. I also did have some money and rewards and a gift card, which made all of this a lot more reasonable. Let's get started on these before I I truly acknowledge my lack of personal financial competency, actually. This first book was an automatic add to basket. The Spare Room by Andrea Bartz. I came this close to buying full price because the synopsis of this one sounds absolutely insane. When I first read this, my jaw hit the floor. In this thriller, we basically have this couple who invites our protagonist, Kelly, to stay with them at their mansion, which is all great timing for Kelly because she's currently on the outs with her boyfriend. But then this is where things start to derail. Our protagonist starts to fall for not one, but both of our hosts and ends up having a threesome with them. And then soon after, she discovers that the last woman they invited into their relationship ends up going missing, which, you know, raises some pretty big red flags for her. I don't know what could be more star-coded. I'm expecting some rich people drama, toxicity, romance, all great things. I think we can agree. The premise, definitely leaning towards the more ridiculous side. And I love that. We're gonna set our books up here. If you're not new here, I'm obviously not in my typical setup. I am home for the holidays. Home for the holidays. But I tried to, you know, make the background still kind of cute. Anyways, I also picked up The Brothers Hathorn by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is a spin-off novel from the Inheritance Game trilogy, which I did enjoy. Not an all-time favorite series like it is for some, but it was entertaining for what it was. Honestly, Avery ended up with the wrong brother. Hey, don't chew the messenger, okay? I believe this book follows Jameson and Grayson's POV. Where's Nash and Xavier? I am a bit disappointed by that. Wouldn't it be nice to get the perspective of all the brothers that we have grown to love over the series from a book titled The Brothers. Emphasis on brothers. Hathorne. Just something to think about. The real problem is that we didn't get enough Nash in the previous books. A mysterious cowboy. Tell me more. If you love that romance series, wait, what is it? Something's ch Chestnut Springs? I feel like you get me. I am looking forward to reading this, but let's just say my expectations are not very high. I may be being a bit preemptively negative, but I'm a hater at heart, okay? <laughs> I can't help it. Uh, all in good fun though. The Quiet Tenant by Clemence Michelon. If this author is indeed French, I think that was somewhat right. I can probably figure it out. Yeah, I was right. If you thought the last thriller sounded crazy, this one might even be more so. This is about this guy who on the outside is a family man. He's a bit of a a beloved figure in his community. Turns out though, he's actually a misogynistic kidnapping serial killer. And his latest captive is currently in his shut out back. But when his wife dies, he and his 13 year old daughter are forced to move. And so he has to figure out a way to transport this woman while also, you know, not letting on that 
he's holding her captive. And then if all I just said wasn't enough, another woman enters the picture and starts to develop feelings for this guy. The manipulation and pure evil this guy radiates. I feel so much rage already. I believe this follows the POVs of the woman he's holding captive, his daughter, and then the woman who starts to fall for him. So I'm glad that this is not like a you situation going on because I could not take being in this guy's head. No. <laughs> Some of you are gonna be so excited for this next book. You thought Twilight's fandom was big. <laughs> Not anymore. I have not seen the internet go so crazy for a book. I swear we'll be reading about this in the history books one day. It sounds like I'm kidding, but if I can read about Logan Paul and a media textbook, I could read about this one day, okay? <laughs> Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yurotz. When I see people who don't typically post book content, post about a book, I feel obligated as a book lover and bookish content creator to read it. Even if, you know, I've never really felt particularly compelled to read about dragons, my brain immediately goes to how to train your dragon, which solid movie no complaints here, but do I really want to read about that? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not so sure about this one, but I'm hoping that whatever in here that has made people fall so deeply in love with it works for me. Even the cashier who checked me out saw this and was like, oh, you have good taste. And I was like, oh, thank you, I know. <laughs> no, I didn't do that. And then she started to go on about Iron Flame. And my mom, who primarily reads historical fiction, mind you, was standing right next to me at the time and was like, was this book about? Dragons and a school, I think, period. And now going back to thrillers, we have a lot of them to go through. I've been deprived of my thrillers recently. It's kind of crazy, I only read like three last month. So I was kind of gravitating towards them this trip. Let's talk about this one next. Their Vicious Games by Joelle Wellington, which is a YA thriller that I've heard amazing, amazing things about. It looks like we follow this girl who is blacklisted from her dream Ivy League college. And so is forced to join this competition called The Finish in which the winners of it are basically set for life. The finish is funded by this rich, affluent family, but as the story unfolds, we, alongside the protagonist, uncover the more sinister nature from this competition slash family. A YA thriller bringing it with the commentary. Love to see it. The competition aspect sounds really thrilling. I've seen this be compared to Squid Games. <laughs> love that show, love it. And again, it seems like it's going to cover some important topics. It's great that all kinds of YA literature nowadays offers the youth a place to talk about and have these conversations. Next, The Block Party by Jamie Day, which was actually 50% off. A few select books were, including this one. I didn't really know anything about this, but when I saw the cover and the title, instantly I got domestic thriller vibes. From the flap, it looks like this takes place on a cul-de-sac where a murder occurs at a summer block party. And so as the book goes on, we are trying to figure out who done it and why, while also uncovering the juicy, I'm expecting petty secrets within the neighborhood. I'm feeling like we're following multiple perspectives in here as the synopsis doesn't really specify a singular POV. <laughs> Ellen Hildebrand, Hild Hilder Hildebrand, she blurped it. Like a firecracker on a hot summer night. Okay, so this will be a summer read is what I'm hearing. I'm intrigued. I'm always looking for my next favorite domestic thriller. To me, they are some of the most fascinating within the thriller genre as it kind of flips the idea of how something many of us view as a safe and comforting place can instead have so much violence. Ooh, scary. Next, How Can I Help You by Laura Sims. Now this thriller, before I picked it up, all I knew about it was that it follows two librarians, which immediately I was hooked. I always loved a little meta moment in my literature. It looks like one of these librarians is also a former nurse with a bit of a suspicious past that this other librarian starts to root around in after a death at the library occurs. This sounds so good. What was I supposed to do with that synopsis besides getting it in my possession immediately? This seems like the perfect avid thriller lover read. Moving on. We can't keep dilly dallying, okay? This next book has been on my radar for a while. That is Cassandra in Reverse by Holly Smale. I first discovered this through a friend of mine. She hadn't even read it, but she found it and showed it to me and was like, Sarah, this seems like a book you'll be into. And I have not been able to stop thinking about it since. If you had the power to change the past, would you? Yes, I would. <laughs> Man, there's so much I would change. We're getting deep. She's just been dumped. She's just been fired. Her local cafe has run out of banana muffins. Honestly, that alone would send me on a spiral. It's giving time travel, possibly butterfly effect with a over the top heroine vibes. This I believe is just like a general fiction novel with some magical realism elements. Sounds promising. This next novel, I'm surprised I haven't seen get the amount of hype that this author's other books have. The marketing team really woke up and went like, hmm, 
Yeah, I think we're just gonna sit out on this one. Betting on You by Lynn Painter. I read and loved Lynn Painter's other YA romances. One even has like a Groundhog Day situation, which we all know I love that kind of stuff. Maybe you don't know, but I do. Lynn Painter, specifically Lynn Painter's YA romances are an auto buy for me. I've not read any of her adult novels, so I can't really speak on those. And Betting on You, it looks like we have a little enemies to lovers situation going on at a hotel water park. Great Wolf Lodge, hello. <laughs> are our characters going to break out some magical wands and start shooting spells. I'd be deceased, okay? <laughs> Half of you have no idea what I'm talking about. I did have my coffee this morning, so I am of sound mind, I promise. But I'm thinking this will be a fun summertime read, maybe? Lynn Painter is one of those authors who seem to turn out books like, she comes out with like at least two books a year. Some people just run definitely. I don't know what they're on, but can I get some of that? <laughs> did my camera just overheat? Yeah. Was that very cool of it? No. Is this a new camera and I'm still trying to figure it out? Yeah. This next book I might be the most excited about. I've been anticipating this book for years. It feels like I've been talking about it for years. Vengeance of the Pirate Queen by Trisha Levenseller, the third installment to the Daughter of the Pirate King series. They recently redid all the covers, so this is definitely not going to match my cartoon paperback covers. <laughs> Publishers, I'm talking to you. Can we leave behind in 2023 changing up covers midway through a series? We're all tired of it, okay? It's exhausting. You expect me to go out and buy these two other covers just so I can have an aesthetically looking shelf? It's not happening. You are only making me mad. You are only irritating me. You are only getting on my last nerve. And now I'm complaining about you on YouTube. Not like what I say will do much, but still, that's besides the point. I will say the sprayed edges, gorgeous. The map. The map on the inside, stunning. It feels like I have a special fairy loot edition of this book. There's even a little ribbon bookmark. This is one of my all time favorite fantasy series. So I'm super excited to get to this. Hopefully all the waiting will have been worth it and cover changing will have been worth it. Midnight is the Darkest Hour, Ashley Winstead's 2023 release. I believe I've heard that this one has a bit of a fairy tale vibe going on as it's said to be more lyrical than her previous work. Ashley Winstead tends to write more commentary heavy thrillers while also not losing sight of the plot. Lot, which I always appreciate. Coincidentally, last year during the sale, I picked up and read and loved The Last Housewife, so it only felt fitting that I do the same, hopefully do the same, this time around. The synopsis is not really given much, which is kind of a trend with all of Ashley Winstead's novels. It's like you don't really know what you're getting into going in until you actually get into it. But I do know that this follows a preacher's daughter, a murder mystery, and apparently there's some vampiric element in here. Interesting. This is the only non-hardcover I picked up. Not so perfect Strangers by Ella Stratton. Though it's practically the size of a hardcover. It's not even large print. Kind of weird. I bought this because I am buddy reading it with a friend of mine in January. So I have already started it. I am about a third through. And guys, I have not felt this way about a thriller in so long. <laughs> so long. I absolutely love it so far. It may even be a five star. I'm not finished yet, but I'm feeling like we may be starting off 2024 with a five star read. The characters have depth, the nuance, the commentary. This is what I look for in a thriller. I cannot wait to finish this and talk more about it in a wrap up. Not So Perfect Strangers follows two women with very different lives, but what they do have in common is that they're both trying to get out of an abusive relationship. And after meeting, they realize that maybe they can help each other, help a girl out. You know, women need to stick together. However, they have very different ideas of what that means. Guys, it's so good. It's so good. What you're looking for is in this library by Michiko Aoyama. This has been said to be for fans of The Midnight Library and Before the Coffee Gets Cold, both great books with a kind of cozy magical realism element. And it looks like in this book, the magical realism is in the form of this librarian who has this ability to know exactly what book would best benefit her customers at that point in their life. And we see that play out through five different individuals, each looking for a new direction or purpose in life. I wasn't really planning on getting this book, but it spoke to me. Maybe the librarian in here knew that I needed this book in my life. I'm going with that. This seems like such a sweet, heartwarming story. I'm excited. Moving on to Barnes number two. The 26th is an all day affair. I did find a few other books I was hoping to, but I also picked up Speak of the Devil by Rose Wilding. This is one of the thrillers that I never seen, let alone heard of before, but after reading the synopsis, I was like, you'll be coming home with me. It sounds absolutely wild. The blurb is a little bit graphic, just warning you. It's not too bad, but putting it out there. We start off in a seedy hotel room where seven women are gathered around a man's severed head. <laughs> 
I should not be laughing. Jeez, Sarah. Sorry. That is not funny. I just laugh when I am uncomfortable. So we have these women, each claiming that they didn't do it, but in order to protect one another, they have to figure out who's the culprit? Who's the decapitator? Isn't that like a superhero villain? <laughs> if not, it should be. Doesn't that just sound so unique and fun? I'm excited to give this and this author a go. This thriller I had seen at this Barnes & Noble like a few days before when I was <laughs> when I was scalping it out, okay? <laughs> I wanted to see what hard covers they had. Luckily, they still had Good Girl, Bad Blood by Alice Feeney. Alice Feeney really with the oxymorons out here. This has been released for a hot minute now, so y'all probably know what it's about. I, however, do not. Okay, so it looks like we're trying to figure out two crimes in here, a baby that was stolen 20 years ago and a woman who is murdered in a care home. Not the elderly, oh no. And how they are possibly connected. Does anyone not like Alice Feeney? I have only personally seen people speak highly of her. I can stand behind that because I've only ever enjoyed what I've read from her. So I'm expecting great things, but of course, let me know if I'm wrong. And maybe if I need to take my expectations down a notch. I'm also really excited about this next novel. One of Us is Back by Karen McManus. The third book in the One of Us is Lying series. Is it? Yeah, behind me. I actually have the rest of the series along with my other Karen McManus books. So clearly at one point in my life, I was a huge fan of her. This was Sarah in high school. This is what she read. So I had to get the third installment to the series I credit my love of reading to. I read these a while ago. Oh my God, she's come out with a lot of books. I've read all of them except this one and nothing more to tell. When she come out with that? Last year maybe? Out of all of her books, I do still believe One of Us is Lying is her best. I do remember that in the first book we followed the initial four and then in the second book we follow a new generation of characters and I believe in this one we follow a mix of the new generation and initial four. I'm not really sure. We'll see. Which I am excited about because I was definitely disappointed in the second book that we didn't get much of the OG crew. I like to describe the series as if you took The Breakfast Club and Pretty Little Liars, mashed them together, and made a book out of it. Like that sounds like so much fun and it is. If this fell, death by books. <laughs> and then lastly, I picked up another thriller, How I'll Kill You by Ren DeSafano. You know when someone describes a book and you immediately know you're going to love it? That was the case with this book for me. I believe this book is about triplets who are also serial killers that target vulnerable men by making them their boyfriends and then offing them. But when the youngest sister falls for her mark, this morphs into a massive thriller about choosing between your family and your partner, what you owe your family. I'm very excited to explore the family dynamics in here, specifically the sister dynamics. There's also supposed to be some romance in here. And we're out of bounds. Luckily, we are done. This may be my biggest Barnes Noble haul to date. I hope you all had fun going book shopping and finding some new books to start off 2024 with me. I would say that I'm planning on not going back to Barnes for a while. However, I did get money and rewards from the sale. So one could argue that it would be counterproductive not to use them. And that's book lover math for you. Let me know what books I talked about today that you would like me to prioritize. This is actually my first video I'm filming in 2024. Happy New Year. I took a little break over the holidays, but I am back and super excited to film some videos I've been in the planning stages of, so stay tuned. But if you have any specific videos you want to see more of in the new year, let me know because I always want to make content that y'all are just as excited about. Thank you all so much for your continued support. I appreciate and love every single one of you. I wish I could just reach through the screen and give every single one of you a big old hug. I'll hug these books instead. Why am I still holding these books? <laughs> all right, I'm gonna let y'all go now. I've held you long enough. But if you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help me mention it out a lot. You can also comment, interact, subscribe, all that fun YouTube stuff. I'd really appreciate it. I hope y'all are having a great beginning of 2024 and I will see you in my next video. Bye.